Now moving on to sacrum diagnosis, we're gonna start with a screening exam, which is the seated flexion test. So to begin that, we're gonna have our patient turn away from us, so go ahead and turn away. And ideally, our patient's feet are gonna be resting on the floor. Alternatively, we can use some kind of ladder back stool um, to support their feet so that they're stable. Now, we want to sit or kneel behind our patient and we're gonna be finding our PSISs. So starting from the iliac crest, we can track down the pelvis until we get to our PSISs. And then from here, we're gonna ask our patient to dive forward. So go ahead and dive down forward. And as they're diving forward, we're gonna be evaluating the PSISs to determine which one moves first and furthest in a superior and anterior direction. So come back up and then go back down again. And I'm clearly seeing that the left PSIS is moving uh, first and furthest in a superior direction. That will mean that my C deflection test is positive on the left. And once we've completed that C deflection test, since we're already in the position, we can evaluate for a diagnosis of L5. So we come to our iliac crest, we move medially. That spinous process, right now we're gonna assume is L4. Move one spinous process down to L5 move laterally through the transverse processes. And we see that there is a very clear rotation of L5 to the left. Now go ahead and bend forward for me. Test and flexion, come back up and stick out your chest and look up behind you. And kind of lean back into me, good. Now testing in flexion and extension, it appears that with flexion, the symmetry improves, which indicates that our L5 diagnosis is L5 flexed, rotated left, sibent left. Now I'm gonna have my patient move to a prone position. So go ahead and lie face down. Now that my patient is in a prone position, I can optionally reset the pelvis by flexing the knees and lifting the hips up. And then I will come up to our PSIs again so iliac crest down to the PSISs. And then from here, I'm gonna drop medial, and in some cases, medial and superior, into the sacral sulci, which is just medial to the PSISs. Once I find the sacral sulci, I'm evaluating for anterior or posterior deviation, or which sacral sulcus is deep or shallow. And on exam, I am noticing that the left sacral sulcus seems to be deep or seems to be anterior. So now coming from the sacral sulci, I will move inferiorly along the SI joints until I just, I'm just about to drop off the SI joints and then I'm gonna push superiorly and anteriorly and I'll be right on the inferior lateral angles. Now I am evaluating here for which inferior lateral angle is posterior. And what I notice is the left ILA is posterior and inferior. My next step is to do a lumbosacral spring test, which will help us determine whether uh, the sacrum has an anterior preference of motion or a posterior preference of motion. I'm gonna put the heel of my hand on the lumbosacral junction, and I'm gonna push anteriorly, which is gonna induce lumbar extension and sacral flexion. And I feel a normal spring, which indicates that uh, there's normal anterior motion at the sacral base. Another test that I can use to evaluate for anterior or posterior deviation of the sacrum is the sphinx test. So for the sphinx test, I can choose either the sacral sulci or ILAs, and I'm gonna start with the sacral sulci and put my thumbs in the sacral sulci. I'm gonna acknowledge my deep sulcus on the left again. And then you can have your patient um, come up onto their elbows, come up on your elbows. That's gonna cause the same lumbar extension and sacral flexion. What I notice is that the previous asymmetry of the sacral sulci has resolved and they're more symmetric. Go back down onto your chest, great. Now, if I did the same thing at the ILAs, come back up onto your elbows. I'll also notice that they become more level, which indicates that the sacrum has a more anterior preference. Come back down. 
So now with that information, I can come up with my sacrum diagnosis. I have a C deflection test positive on the left. I have a deep sacral sulcus on the left, a posterior inferior ILA on the left side, a spring test that is negative and a sphinx test that is negative. Those findings would add up to a left unilateral sacral flexion.